One of the very first videos I've ever saw of you on YouTube, I think you were on a Danish or I mean a Dutch TV show and you were blindfolded doing mediumship and like pulling a, you know, a number out of a, a fishbowl. And I've also seen you do the blindfold thing while at the college. Did you start that? Where did you get that idea for that? The raffle ticket one, I'd seen it done on a psychic level, but I'd never seen anybody doing it on a mediumistic level. And the reason I, I, I did it, a guy in Holland actually, he thought, he, he actually set a website up against me saying I was the world, at least I was the world's best cold reader. Hmm, yeah. Okay. So I thought, right, I need to do something to take away the things that could, I can be accused of cold reading. Yeah. And, and in the interview, I suppose, you know, that there's another, there's another intelligence, another mind behind that communication. So for this exercise to work, I'm not going to see the person. So I cannot read the body language. I'm not going to know which person has picked the ticket out. So I can't focus on them and tune in psychically. I can't tune into the voice or read the sound of their, their, their voice. And if there is that truly that intelligence, the spirit world has got to know which ticket I picked and the spirit world has got to know which recipient has got the corresponding ticket. So that was the closest I could come in taking away of psychically reading and taking away this body and this cold reading. And, and actually when I did that on the show, it was only the second time I'd ever done it in my life. Oh, wow. You know, they went, they went out to a million people, you know, well, it's only yeah. a small country. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but when I took the course with you at the college, the last night you did healing, uh, you gave it out as kind of like a goodbye. And I, but you're the, the very first time I ever received healing was from you. And it was felt like this electricity flowing through my body. My, my, all my muscles were twitching. And then I don't know if you remember afterwards, but afterwards I walked up to you and I go, I think you just changed my life. And it's, and ever since then, I've been like really into healing because I just didn't, I didn't think it was possible. If you're really in that closeness and altered state and within that power of the spirit and can truly allow that power, healing power to flow through you, not just what you feel, but it's something that it gives me, you know, you can't put the feeling into, into words. It's just something sacred and, and, and beautiful but i do have to say to some healers who say they get tired afterwards and i say well then you must not be connecting correctly to the power of the spirit because if you're truly connected to that power and that power is flowing through you then it has to leave a residue with you as it flows through so after healing you shouldn't be tired so if you are it means then you're giving your own life force your own life energy which can benefit the patient, but it will then leave you drained and depleted and, and tired. But if you're truly channeling that power, you shouldn't feel tired at all afterwards. Right. And I know you say the same thing about mediumship as well. And I've seen it where, you know, you will teach a class all day, then demonstrate at night and then hang out at the bar till late and do it day after day. Like, it's amazing. I've never seen someone with so much energy. So people used to say to me, you know, oh, you're going to burn yourself out. And no, you know, if you're with that power and that power is touching you, it's got to flow. So it, it's mainly when you're using your own, say, maybe psychic energy, your own life energies, that's when it becomes tiring and depleted. But if you're definitely with that power, you're not tired at all, you know. The only tiring thing in my work is the travel and the, the time changes and whatever, you know. The work itself, like working with the spirit, is it, it, not tiring at all. You know, when I've been truly in the power, Sometimes you're not in the power as much, but when you're really in that power, as you, as you said, I can go and party all night afterwards. Yeah, uh, I've seen it. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just, <laughs> just energized by it. You know? So people will want to know that, how do you connect to the power? How, 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 would you, how do you teach that? And this is where a lot of people who come into this get it wrong. Uh, they want to put the cart before the horse and they want to go straight into like the mechanics and exercises where really what we need to do is, in a way, a self-awareness development. 
being able to go within one's own soul and become aware and awaken those three ingredients that the soul is the vehicle of and that's the spirit which is no shape and form that's that divine power of life which along with the emotion and the higher mind the higher consciousness because mind survives physical death so there has to be an aspect of the mind that belongs within the soul so it's being able to awaken those three aspects and and create a a positive with those three aspects emotionally and within that power deal with the negativity embrace the positiveness of that power but i believe there's that god particle within each of us and a wonderful man called sir george Drevelyan says we each of us is a droplet of god that we truly really need to touch that point that god particle and awaken that power because it's not just a power that's separate or outside of us it's that power within us that we have to develop but nobody can develop it for you it's a personal journey and you've got to find your own way it doesn't matter you know what you want to call god what you and you see god what religious background you belong to or don't belong to um, God's a universal word that everybody understands, but there's got to be a, a be awakening, a reality, and a relationship to that God power within, and allow that to be alive and to be part of you, not just when you want to be all spiritual or spiritual experiences, but it's got to be a part of your life in your everyday living. And that doesn't mean you've got to be all saintly and holy. doesn't mean you can't go and party and have a good time, you know, right. and enjoy the things of this physical world. You know, we're part of this physical world and have got to partake in it and be part of it, you know, and we have to have the balance between the two. But, you know, it's been able to live your life. It's like when I live my life, and this is why I find uh, maybe easier than some, when it comes to staying with that power and working with that higher mind, from the soul of the spirit world, is that I'm allowing my experience of everyday life, sharing it with that God part with me. If I even if I'm in a nightclub, it's been many years since I've been to a nightclub, I'm, I'm sort of listening to that feeling and that power within me, how it's feeling to what I'm doing and experiencing at that moment. Like speaking to you now, um, you know, I'm not just speaking to you with my conscious mind or listening with my physical ears. I'm listening from my soul and experiencing the feeling of it as I share with you, you know. And, and then so when I come to work mediumistically, healing or, or through the communication, I'm not doing anything abnormal. Right, yeah. Because it's just a natural part of me, of my living and my expression. Yeah, it's just, it seems so... Um abstract in a way is like how did you get started in that like i know you suggest meditation is a good way to like get to know yourself and yeah the, the, this, this self-awareness first of all it, it's you know i mean because if i don't understand my soul okay how on earth am i going to understand the recipient soul if i'm working with them on a psychic level um i'm not going to be able to understand your soul if i can't understand my soul let alone understand the soul from the spirit world and also you know the emotions is a base point of communication mediumship so i've also got to be able to understand my own emotions and also there's so many of us and to one degree or another all of us we have difficulty with our emotions because of not wanting people to see certain emotions, but maybe past experiences, we've put barriers on them. So then we put in a, then a barrier on the expression and then the use of the emotion in, in the healing and communi communication. So, you know, there has to be that self-development. And I can also, also remember a, a very elderly medium, retired medium saying to me, uh, Paul, this is, uh, um, after watching three particular well-known mediums demonstrate in my early years, he said, Paul, you can be better than those mediums, but only if you do one thing. I thought, wow, he's going to give me the key to the great revelation to all mediumship. And I was so disappointed with him. What he told me, he just said, simply be you. I thought, is that it? And I didn't understand at the time, but I do now, because I had to accept and realise I didn't like the world to see the real Paul, because Paul didn't like the real Paul. Yeah. And so I had to work on the aspects 
of the pool that I didn't like and change. There were aspects of the pool I didn't like that I couldn't change that I had to accept. But also, which we're just as guilty of, we find it difficult to embrace those positive aspects of what we are. I can truly say, even uh, you know, even with the negative points or the not so good points about me, um, I can truly say I like me and love me. Yeah, um, I couldn't say that in the beginning. Yeah, um, I didn't at all. You know, because at the end of the day, all the spirit world has got to work with is you the real you. So if you cannot allow the real you to live and to be expressed, then the spirit world can't use you. I wasn't expecting all of that. Yeah, I, I really feel that. Well, it's the whole saying of know thyself, right? It's just so simple. You know, you can go on these spiritual courses to, you know, to learn spirituality. And I'm sorry, there's no course that can offer you it. There's no place that can offer you it. There's no person that can offer you it's, it. It's a personal journey. I mean, you know, without going all religious or whatever, you know, if you want to say, use the story of, of Jesus, you know, going into the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights, where it, it's really, it's only when you reach and break that barrier and go into that depths of yourself. And it's going into that, stillness and that silence and really going within and be able to move your consciousness beyond the physical and really truly dwell and awaken that power and be within it but again then work with that positiveness and the negatives and bring that change and, and acceptance so really it's, it's only by you know personal time in, in one's own self that, that we can do it and there's no magic formula you know I can offer you a meditation that might help you to achieve it you can buy all sorts of meditations go on all sorts of meditative courses but at the end of the day it boils down to to you yourself because I can't go within your soul and take you there to experience it it's only you that can experience that truly wow yeah it makes sense in your book, you talk about how you were called a reluctant medium. What sold you on mediumship or your own abilities? So I did the journey of discovery. I, I wasn't breaking my neck um, to be a medium. And I think that's what goes wrong today. Too many people begin their journey before they've even started. They're already deciding what, what they want to be and what they're going to become with it. I just, just do the journey and do it with joy and then naturally the path will open before you in what you're going to be and what you're going to do and become with it. I've never set out with a target or an aim to write a book, to be a teacher, to do the TV, to travel the world. I never set one of those intentions. They just all naturally just opened up and presented themselves in, um, in front of me, you know. In the beginning, I'd have been quite happy to be proved I wasn't a medium. Because in the beginning, I used to get all these messages saying, oh, one day you'll be here doing this. And I used to think, what a load of rubbish, you know, they need the men in the white coats to come and take them away. I'm not <laughs> interested, you know. But what happened was, was that, you see, when a lot of students come, they want to they want to try so hard. They want to really try to prove themselves they are a medium and they can do it. It actually gets in the way. So with myself, when I was asked to try something or do something, I wasn't scared of trying it. And I wasn't bothered if I was wrong. I was quite happy to say, Paul, that's your imagination, your own mind. So I wasn't scared to express. And I just I just expressed whatever can without worrying about it, of right or wrong, um, but it turned out to be right. Um, you know, so I think it actually, it actually helped being that reluctant, you know, so it was, uh, but even becoming a full-time, you know, it's like a lot of people now are trying to choose it as a career path, which is wrong. It doesn't mean it cannot become somebody's full-time work, but it's not meant for everybody to do. It takes a lot for it to become your life and your full-time um, work. So uh, I think really we've, we've, we've got to make sure we keep the, the spiritual balance and the materialistic balance right between the two you know so i'm not sort of putting anybody down I, it, it, it's my work it's my full-time work i have to say it's my profession i earn my living by it but it's being able to keep still that right motive and intent 
also keeping besides earning a living from it is also being able to keep the spiritual aspect and the service part of it as well and keeping the balance right between between the two a lot of christians here say you know they're very much against mediumship and they say it's evil what do you say to that well i remember once uh, somebody saying to me at one meeting oh you're doing the work of the devil mm -hmm. i said well if it's the work of the devil i'll work for the devil every time <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It brings so much love and joy and hope and, you know, so there's so much good things attached to it. I don't say you could see, call it evil, but as a medium, you know, I, I cannot do anything to force the spirit world to communicate, not to think if they don't want to communicate, I can't do anything about it. So they communicate because they want to communicate. They have a need to communicate. And actually, and this is what mediums should remember too, the communication isn't just about the recipient's need or what they want. It's also about the need of those in the, in the spirit world, you know. And, you know, if you look at all the world religions, okay, you take away all the trappings, all the dogma and the creeds, and break them all down to the basics. And nearly, I would say every religion began on the voice and the power of the spirit. Everyone. And in some form or another, every religion believes in something, this something more beyond the physical. Every religion believes there is something after the physical existence. The only difference with what we do with spiritualism is that we try to give the evidence of it in that communication. For people that aren't aware of spiritualism, because uh, it's, I know you, we don't have that many uh, spiritualist churches over here, but how would you describe spiritualism? It bothers me a little bit, and I also, also remember something Gordon Eganson said, even though he was the president, the head of the spiritualist movement, he said, spiritualism shouldn't become another religion, which it has done. He said, spiritualism should be religion, should be religion, where what our truths are, are accepted um, and taken on board within all religions, and allow them to manifest it in their religion and their culture in the way they, they need to um, individually. If you look, you know, or even the Catholic Church, you know, years ago, they would have their have their mystics, their mediums and the communication. Um, it's, it's, it's there, you know, within, within all religions, the mediumship in one form or another in all cultures, you know. I think spiritualism is going wrong in one way by becoming another religion, they're becoming a little bit dogmatic like most religions have, um, have done. And you see a lot of people, the general public today, are off formalised, organised religion. People are looking for the spiritual aspect. So we can have the spiritual aspect with their formal religion. You know, and if I look at all the messages and contacts I give to people over the years, everybody's problem in life is the same. The circumstances are different, but the problem is the same. Their soul is not living in the way their spirit needs to express to be fulfilled. And if you could truly, fully, all individually understand that aspect of that power that we are, and to be able to manifest it in all walks of life in the way we need, then you'd find people in this world will be far happier in more harmony in what they're living in their journey of eternal life. Yeah, that makes sense because everyone is, I feel like everyone is always searching and they're, they're always looking for the shortcut too, and they're always looking for, but there is no shortcut. and. That's right. It, it's like sometimes when people come for, 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 sit, for sittings, you know, and they're sort of like not happy with life and they don't know what to do or what to change. And I try to help them and I show them what the potential is, would satisfy their soul and spirit. And they'll say, and I'll say, you know, does that resonate? Oh, yeah, yeah, that really resonates. Then they sit there and give for 10 minutes, give me reason excuses why they can't. So I said, well, okay, then stop complaining and accept your lot or have the courage to live and feel happy. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, and, and actually, the more and more I think about my work, you know, in the past, it, you know, I thought my work was about, about taking away the fear of death and dying, just bringing that sort of like knowledge that, you know, there's something else afterwards. But the more and more I think about it, I've come to the understanding my life's not about death and dying. My life is bringing the mess message about life and living.
because we live for eternity, but people are scared to live. And, and it's so difficult because we live in this physical world and consciousness. And even though we may say and accept and we believe in like eternity and that this continual existence, it's still difficult for our conscious minds to, to really fully comprehend uh, that concept. Because if you think, it doesn't matter whether you have five years in this world or a hundred years, it's only a grain of sand in the desert to the eternity of your experience. It's such a small part of our total expression. And I know you've you've have some of the the best stories that I've heard. Um, what's what should be your most memorable spiritual experience that you've had? I've had some wonderful ones where I've given contacts to people, but I actually think my own personal experiences mean the most to me. Because if somebody really wants to be hard, they can probably pull apart and try to destroy the facts of the evidence I've given in communication or that I've received from another medium. But the spiritual experiences I've had nobody could ever take away and destroy. Can you go in a little bit more detail of what, what that experience was like? Well, uh, the first time was, it was it was just one afternoon. I, I was just sitting at home and I was having thoughts about my father who um, he'd passed quite as a young man in a car accident. And I was just thinking, oh, you know, what was it like to die the way you did? And where are you now? And what are you doing? And uh, that evening, you know, I was sitting with a medium friend where we used to just sit just to be in the power, not to give messages or anything like that. And the spirit world actually took me through the experience of my father's death, of being in the car, my foot going on the brakes, my spirit leaving the body. And this is why I say death itself is painless, even in an accident. Um, the spirit knows it's time, it's going to happen, and the spirit moves out. And then it was just like people describing those um, near-death experiences when they go down the tunnel of light. And then I just came into this brilliant light, and as they adjusted, I could see my father standing there. And uh, the feeling was just, you know, I can't put it into words. Then I heard this voice to say, which I now understand was one of my guides, they said, come with us. And I said, I don't want to go anywhere, I want to stay here with my father. They said, no, we want you to come with us. So I said, well, can my father come with us? And they said, no, the light will be too bright for him. And they took me to a place which I now understand and know as of the halls of learning. And I was invited to walk down this hall and sit in this chair. And then this little um, Chinese girl presented this jewel box to me. And there was every jewel you could think of. And I was offered to choose a jewel from the box. Now, if you'd have given me that box in the physical world, I wouldn't have chosen the one I chose in the spirit world. I'd have chosen a ruby or an emerald or whatever, but I didn't. I chose the pearl. And as that saying, the pearls of wisdom, the pearls of knowledge, and so yeah. And when it came to leave the place, I didn't want to leave. But then after that, they gave me other experiences so I um, don't want to scare or frighten anybody, but they took me to levels of consciousness I didn't like, and I couldn't wait to get back off. So if everybody thinks it's just gonna be all beautiful rose gardens, uh, uh, forget it, okay? So they took me to play levels of consciousness that was empty, dark, barren, which was desolate, and the feeling was horrible, okay? So what we've got to realize is, the spirit world is a state of being and state of mind. So the conditions we create for ourselves of what we've created by what we've lived and expressed here in this physical journey, yeah? But we're not condemned to that for eternity. We can sort of, there's those higher minds trying to awaken the minds of those souls and you'll be with souls of the same minds, the same expression and likeness and you'll be able to move in your realization to the lighter vibrations. So we're not condemned to eternity or punishment. It's nobody's put us there. It's what we've created by ourselves and what we've lived and expressed. And then do, is the ultimate goal to be like God or just to be just to keep, or you're just always purifying yourself or what is the... There's people who teach that we're here to perfect the spirit. I don't agree with that. The spirit is that something divine, something of God. So the perfection is already there. 
it's being able to express that perfection either in actions, words, thoughts, or feelings. And I think when we get to that ultimate God expression, then I think we discard the soul and then we just go back to the source, to the power of life. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, do you think anyone can be a medium? I'm going to say no. There's a lot of mediums saying, yes, you can. Uh, forgive me, this might be a bit noise of me, but that's just to get the numbers of students and get the clients. Um, <laughs> okay. So what I, what I say to students is that every one of us can be psychic, okay? And I, if you have the right training, the right type of mind, there's no limitation because the word psychic comes from the Greek word soul. So we've all got a soul. And really the psychic is only an extension of that intuition that we all experience to one degree or another so it's just training it and developing it so mediumistically what i say is because we're all spirits then we are all able to have maybe a spiritual awareness and experiences to one degree or another but to be able to develop it where it is of a consistency of a regular use and to be able to use it for other people then I would say no. I think what we really need to look at, and this is I think where we're missing in our message, it's about developing the power of the spirit. So then the spirit world can touch us and move us in all walks and areas of life. Yeah? whether that's as a nurse or a doctor, as a teacher, as a businessman, as a politician, it doesn't, as a scientist, it doesn't matter. And um, so what we want in is people to do whatever it is they're doing in their life, but to be able to be moved and allow their spirit to be expressed in it. And actually, if we all truly could develop this power and be moved by the power of the spirit world, we could actually make all the healers and mediums redundant. We don't need them. Just give this, share this little story. I, I, I can remember driving somewhere with Gordon Ingenson and uh, I was telling him how I slept with an accident in my bed. And he said, why on earth do you sleep with an accident in your bed for? And I said, well, my home was burgled and I broke into and I'm scared of it happening again when I'm asleep in bed. And he said, you are silly, Paul. He says, uh, don't you realize how well protected you are and no harm will ever come to you. And then he added, and even in your car, now, I'd never told him, but I'd always had this fear that I would die in a car accident because my father did, my grandmother did, two best friends did. Uh, so I always had that fear. So I thought, oh, great, fantastic. I'll cancel all my life insurance and take extra pension. Uh, <laughs> so um, when, I got, when I got home, I sat down and, and, I, and I spoke sent the thought to the spirit world. Why am I so well protected and not everybody else? I'm no more important and I'm no more special than anybody else. And the answer that I got, I got was, we try to do the same for everybody, but we are limited by you as individuals on how much you can respond to our power. Wow, oh, okay. And this is what we should be encouraging everybody to do, is to heighten that sensitivity, to be able to, develop that power, listen to that still silent voice and allow that power to move. And if you think, you know, uh, because that's the only way prayers are answered. If people believe in prayers, I do, and I believe prayers can answer. But God's got no hands or feet. All God's got is you and me. It's either if you're asking a particular prayer and I'm the right person to answer that prayer, then it's for, for the spirit to be out, the power of the spirit to move you into the direction and the path of me, or move me into the direction of the path of you. That's the only way prayers can be answered. Wow, yeah, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. In, in your book, you talk about, a lot about it's important to know your guides. Is it important to know like their names or what do you mean by that? No, we've got to be careful that too many people come into this and become like uh, guide worshippers. You know, who's got the most unusual or most important guide, you know. So I'm not into that. I don't believe we've even got to, um, we've got to see them. I've only experienced seeing mine in 30 years, four or five times in 30 years. 
when I'm working with the communication, different with the healing, but with the communication, I uh, I don't know who's working with me. I'm not conscious of them. Hmm. I just trust that they'll be there playing their part, um, helping, assisting those loved ones, communicating, assisting with the power and the energy. A little different with the healing if I'm going into that more like deep altered state and getting the blending with the guide for the healing. But what I do is, I think what we need to do is maybe sit at home and in ourselves, um, not to become actually have to be conscious of them or get answers from them, but just sit quietly and speak to them from your soul about things. Don't always expect an answer there and then, just put it out there to them and the answers will come in one form or another or the direction will will um, will come. But you know, and I say, you know, when, when sometimes people say to me, oh, you know, I've asked my guide this, I've asked the guide that, I've asked my guide the other. And I said, why? Why go to a soldier? Why not go to the commander in chief? Go to God. Yeah. And God will administer it down through the chain of of, of where it can be um, answered or, or, or helped. Yeah. I actually just had that conversation with someone over email. I was because they were talking about guides, and I was like, why would I talk to like the secretary or the, the office manager when I can talk to the president or the boss? You know, I can go walk straight in. Yeah. I know some people, they won't even go to the toilet if the guy, unless the guy tells them. <laughs> uh, and then I, I remember a friend of mine, she was uh, shopping in a supermarket and she slipped on a banana skin, broke a leg and couldn't walk. And like, people said, oh, that was your guide slowing you down. You got doing too much so you couldn't. Come on, how stupid. It's <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, I mean, yeah. I have to. I have to be honest. You know, sometimes I'm ashamed to say who I am and what I do because there's so much silly stuff and so much nonsense sometimes and off the wall stuff with this. And uh, uh, you know, I get embarrassed about it. And it's sounds, It's no wonder sometimes some of the general public um, think think we're all crazy or crackers. You know, it, it's it's, uh, it's no yeah. wonder. Which is a <laughs> we, we, we bring it on ourselves. You know. Well, definitely. Yeah, there's definitely some uh, very interesting uh, personalities. I think this is what makes me uh, different to uh, a lot of mediums. It is, you know, I'm such a down to earth person, feet on the ground, such a logical person, practical person, and everything's going to make sense and logic to me. You know, it's like all these people who, t who, who, who like teach all the negative stuff in the in, within mediumship and the spirit world, you know. And I say, you know, but if you listen to the people who teach all that negativity stuff, they're the first one to, to profess. They've got Archangel, Gabriel, whoever is there, the, or, or Michael as their personal guide. So the same dog penetrates lightness, you know. Um, and then we've got like, you know, we've got, um, I think that came popular a few years ago, walk-ins, you know, you know. How stupid! Your your body is the temple of your spirit. Nobody else's, you know. And then, if you believe in all those guides, then if all these negative things can happen, well, what are you guys playing at? They're not doing the job very well, then, are they? You know, um, it, it it just doesn't it just doesn't make it just doesn't make sense. It's not logical at all. And we've got to remember there is a natural spiritual law that cannot be broken. You know, we talk about all those evolved souls and the higher mind beings, you know. Um, so they're saying that, you know, and we've got to realise, you know, there's not um, a God as an individual person. There's not a devil as an individual being, an evil power and a good power. There's only one power, and it's whether we want to use or manifest it negatively or positively, good or for evil, take O oh, out of good, you've got God, put D in front of evil, and you've got the devil. <laughs> yeah. People ask you this question a lot. It's like, what do you, and uh, you kind of just answered it, but I, I love your answer. What do you do for protection? Nothing. If I thought I'd got to ask for protection, I'd give up medium sheep right now. Yeah. You know, what, what am I protecting myself from? It, 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 it's, you know, you know, you know. I, I'm scared of people. I'm more scared of frightened of people in this physical world than I am from the spirit world. I want any protection from one or two people in this world, um, <laughs> but certainly yeah. not from the uh, uh, from, from from the spirit world. Yeah, I, I, 
you know, and, and again, you know, you've got people who teach this, and one of the first things they teach people developing, you've got to protect yourself, for God's sake, come on, you know. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I very much believe, you know, like attracts like. Mm -hmm. You know, that's part of natural law. You know, you know, you know. I can remember giving this lady several sittings. She'd got a daughter in the spirit world. After a few sittings, you know, she says to me, Paul, she says, you know, you've really helped me and my husband. She says, but there's been one thing we've been waiting for that you've never given us. I said, oh, I'm sorry about that. She said, oh, please don't take it negative. You know, you've... It's been great what you've done for us and everything, you know. And I said, well, can I ask you what it is? And she says, yes, we've been hoping you could give us a nickname. So I said, well, I'm not going to deliberately try because my name will start, my own conscious mind will start conjuring up, but I'll be open to it for the future and maybe she'll bring it sometime, you know. And I said, anyway, so we've got to bring the city to, to a close. And I said, but just before we do, I said, your, your daughter got a favourite cartoon character? And she says, yes. I says, and next to her bed, there's a photograph frame with a, a picture of that cartoon character. And she says, yes. And I said, and it's Betty Boo. And she just broke down into tears. And uh, I said, what's the matter? She says, that's her nickname, Betty Boo. So the intelligence of the spirit world, they knew. I didn't know that's what they were trying to do, but the spirit world responded to her request. That's that's amazing that you know to take your mind out of it because yeah that's what I think messes up I mean, that messes up me all the time is when you try to think you try to think your way through it and that's where you always mess up. Yeah, see, I see. I, I, I try to explain. I I'll sometimes say to students, pretend you've got two brains, one here uh, where the information has to lay and where you have to relay and communicate physically. I said then have another brain in your solar plexus area, and that's the brain you speak and communicate with the spirit world with and you know and we've got three minds we've got the conscious mind i put here with the forehead the subconscious here at the back of the neck at the base of the head and then the higher conscious i put in my solar plexus area so that so that has to come first then up through the subconscious then onto the conscious so if we bring all this focus in here in our head then it's not going to work the way it should do you know um and you know, and some teachers, you know, they'll say, focus on, on your third eye or this television screen of the mind. I say, forget it. You put in the conscious mind first. We speak and become aware from with the mind within our soul. And and again, it's been our fault as teachers in the past. We've said speak to them, but we never told you how. So you're all speaking to the spirit world in words in your head, and your own head will give you the answers back. What you've got to do, you've got to speak to the spirit world through your soul and the whole your mind through the feelings. So I don't speak to the spirit world in words. I speak through with feelings. And it's amazing. I hear, I've heard you say that numerous times, but it just doesn't like click because like I'm a, I always want to go up here. It's really hard to yeah. stop you from doing it's, that. Well, it's normal because that's what we yeah. live our lives by is this conscious mind. But the higher conscious has got to override the conscious. So we need, the, we've still got to use the conscious mind because the conscious mind, the information has to rest on that conscious mind and we need to deliver it. But the magic key is being able to use both at the same time. Wow. If I was giving a contact, I'm communicating, relaying to you with my conscious mind, but I'm communicating and receiving the next information at the same time from it, the mind within my soul. And then that keeps this entity. Um, how do people get in contact with you? Or how do you... Yeah, I have a website. I'm, I'm not always up to date on my website, uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, go to the website or that's uh, mediumpauljacobs.com. Uh, my normal Facebook is full, but you can um, either um, like the page or follow on the on the page and we can see uh, what I'm offering uh, and what I'm doing. Your work going well? Uh, yeah, for the most part, I guess. I'm still uh, in the learning phase and like a knowing myself phase. I've realized I've had to go through a lot of personal development this past year and I feel like, I don't know, getting my ass kicked a little bit, so. It, it can be a painful process, but it's an important yeah. process. I completely lost my faith from when I was a child and like when I knew you or when I met you, I was still like trying to figure out what was real and what wasn't. And I was very kind of cynical. And it's been like the past, past month or two where I'm like, okay, no, there is a God, there is like something. And I'm finally like 
no, I, like I think you say, uh, you have to, the spirit world has to become real to you. And that's just like, just starting to happen for me, where I'm just starting to believe in it. Let me read you these words that I came across the other day from Gordon, finding the spirit within. Before you can touch the spirit, you must find it within yourself. For all truth, for all knowledge, and all love must be found first within oneself. The spirit can never touch you and bring love and peace within your being and from your being until you have found it for yourself. And before you can build a picture of love from the spirit, you must learn to find it in this life. Always prepare yourself as a channel for spirit. Stand there with love radiating from you, then God will touch you. You will have been chosen then as a channel for the great spirit. Wow. Yeah. And honestly, it's so true. It's the essence to it all. 